Welcome everybody to The Sovereign Way. My name is Elizabeth and for the next hour we are immersing in how to stay sovereign when in the presence of constant counterforce. Put your hands up if this is relevant to you in your life right now, to us collectively in our lives together right now. The dynamic between ascension and entropy is a constant turbulence in some of the vibrational layers of our experience. It's not universal. It's not as all encompassing as we can be lured into thinking, but it is real and actualizing in some of the vibrational dimensions of your life. And so it is worth being sovereign in our distinction of what the frequencies of ascension are and what the frequencies of entropy are and how they manifest. But you do not need to let your own biofield and body be the battleground for these things. So whether you are called to the front lines to transform and transmute evil, or you're holding the light with your magnetism and devotion, how effective you are in this in your practice and how enjoyable it is for you to be in your mission, that all depends on your sovereignty. So we're going to deal with this delicately and in a meta language because we don't want to get too addicted to the crisis of warfare narrative. And we certainly don't want to get prideful about our suffering as a symbol of our spiritual influence. So I'm going to ask you and everybody watching to put your I am a warrior identity on the shelf for a moment because that's how you're gonna be able to receive the medicine. What you're about to experience is an hour of high philosophy and vibrational transmission to help strengthen your sovereign poise when dealing with counterforce. It's a blend of high philosophy and transmission, as I say. So your key to success is not to process everything intellectually, but to be open to receiving. So you can take some notes if something strikes you, but don't consider this as a fact-finding experience. This is energetic training and expansion. Ready? Good, 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 good. We are in a mini series called How to be Sovereign in Pain. And it is inspired by our students in the Oasis. The Oasis is a membership-based study group, and if you'd like to develop your spiritual muscle in a group of genius mystics, come on in. Now, last week, we kicked off the series by asking, how do we stay sovereign in physical pain? We know that pain is an intimate life partner. It demands our attention and it demands our awareness, and it's designed for that, to capture our attention from the, the, the spiritual truth of how gloriously beloved we are and focus our attention on the fact that something is wrong in the physical. That's what pain is for. And so thus it can steal us away from our lives. It can take attention away from becoming and focus it right here on the physical structure. And we discovered last week that the key to freedom is to know who you are, even in the pain so that your identity and devotion are free to flow through the agony, thus transforming it to majesty through the beautiful alchemy of mercy. So we're dealing with very real mystical alchemy that is allowed to flow through you in your sovereignty, even when you're in the presence of physical pain. But this is assuming that we're dealing with real actualized physical pain, a thaumaturgic nerval response in your body's communication system. Some pain is caused by a healthy and brilliantly designed body system. And this pain is a part of your life path and a part of the sacred hardship that brings you deeper into Christ. Like the scraped knee when you fall off your bike, when you're learning how to ride your bike for the first time. But some pain is caused by counterforce, and it serves only to distract you from the truth about how powerful and beloved you are. So let's look at counterforce and understand what it is, what it's for, and how it works. 
because when we have a framed understanding, it gives us poise of awareness and it helps us hold our sovereign mindset and vibration, even when in the face of evil. So are you sitting comfortably? I'm looking for nods. Yes. Good. Be comfortable, be poised and be present. Truly arrive here in the room because you've decided to watch this teaching. You've decided to learn more about this and to allow a vibration of expansion in regards to your spiritual muscle. So truly be here now. Let's start with some key definitions. What is sovereign? In the sovereign way, we say that true sovereignty is the freedom to be who you are, to choose creatively based on your core values and to devote your life to the hand of your sovereign God. It is a personal and unique quality of owning the spiritual authority to love without hindrance and to express that love in a way that gives you the fulfillment of belonging in a beautiful and relational world, no matter where you live, no matter what's occurring, in a world where, where you matter and what you have to share finds its place and is received. That's a characteristic of the sovereign life. That's how you know that sovereignty is a characteristic of you, of who you are. To be sovereign is to have the mental and vibrational mastery to not be spiritually influenced by external forces and collective tidal waves of energy, but to confidently and compassionately navigate to true north, whatever the weather. And so your coming of age, your spiritual ascension is a journey across deeper and deeper levels of intimacy with God. And your yearning for him doesn't end with a one-time spiritual awakening, but it is always ongoing in life. And there is no end to the mystery and to the discovery. Let's have a look at a map or the map of consciousness. This is a, a device that was created by Dr. David Hawkins, one of the best consciousness researchers in our modern age, I would say. And he created this device to help us unwrap the phenomenon of ascending consciousness. And this is a great visual um, uh, device to help us distinguish between frequencies of ascension and the frequencies of entropy. So let's look at this scale here. Um, for those of you who have been following the Sovereign Way for a while, you're familiar with this. It's one of our core diagrams. And it was devised by Dr. David Hawkins. So we're assuming that there is... Uh, that um, we are all on a journey of ascending consciousness. We can, we can broadly calibrate logs of consciousness based on different places on this imaginary scale. We all know ascension is not linear, but we are linear people, so it helps us to understand in this way. We're at the top, 1,000, this is an arbitrary number, by the way, but 1,000 represents 100% embodied knowing I am that I am. And that is Christ consciousness. And at the very, very bottom at zero, we have 0% zero knowing that I am that I am. We have spiritual death, essentially. So if this is Christ, then this is antichrist. And where we log on the scale of consciousness at any given time is a measure of the vibrational quality of our life. Up here in sort of 500, 600, we experience incredible peace, incredible self-acceptance. We experience unconditional joy. And actually joy is the currency of life. It causes synchronicities and miracles to bring solution to us. And, uh, and further down, into the antichrist, we experience the opposite. We experience addiction to system. We experience um, oppressive forces. And so in other words, we are arranging theoretical logs of consciousness on an imaginary scale from antichrist to Christ. That's the, the basic scale that we're working on. So your ascension is, uh, or your becoming, your journey of becoming, your your hero's journey, if you like, is an ascension on this scale as you embody more of the divine knowing that you are in fact 
source, spirit and substance recapitulated as one glorious child of God. At a thousand, you know this 100% and you have perfect spiritual authority to turn water into wine. And at zero, you have no knowing of yourself as divine. Now we really get to experience the sovereign life around 500, between 500 and 600. This is where our log of consciousness calibrates with unconditional love. This is a very rare state of consciousness with about only 5% of the world's population, but this is where genius mystics reside. This is the spiritual pioneer, the vanguard of thought and vibration. And you hold a level of electromagnetism that is truly impactful in the collective. And one of your jobs is to hold that space is to hold that space and magnetize the rest. So your electromagnetism is directly related to where you live on this scale, this imaginary scale of consciousness, yes? So on a macro level, there are two distinct dynamics influencing your ascension. When we're aligned with truth, we experience an elevation. We feel enlightenment. We feel enhancement and we call this frequency ascension. This is a dynamic called ascension. And the laws of energetic cause and effect respond to your level of magnetism and you experience improving life. And even when things fall apart and you're in the throes of agony, majesty is always emerging and beauty is always blossoming. But when you're aligned with falsehood, you experience depression. You experience spiritual decline and entropy. So here we have ascension. Let's write that down. And here we have entropy. Because the laws of the universe, the law of attraction, the law of cause and effect, the laws of thermodynamics, the laws of gravity, they all work together to rearrange the adamantine particles of substance into arrangements of misery and doom. When things fall apart, so does your life. So when your identity is in Christ, when things fall apart, majesty emerges. When your identity is in antichrist, when things fall apart, so do you. So this is one of the most powerful pieces of awareness for you to practice the discernment of good and evil. And that's the beginning of sovereignty, right? To know who you are in relation to what is. I'm gonna repeat that again. Sovereignty is to know who you are in relation to what is. So repeat after me. I know who I am. I know how I serve. I am sovereign. Good. So the easiest way to simplify our understanding of this dynamic in a very visceral bodily sense is to say that truth is strengthening. Truth is strengthening and falsehood is weakening. It's a very simplistic way of saying it, but it is true. And you can actually measure this scientifically in the subtle energy systems in your body. And you can train your own field to calibrate the level of truth in anything. And when you have the ability to test the level of truth in anything, whether it's an ideology or a conversation or a sandwich, then you also have the ability to calibrate it up, to transmute and improve and enhance the vibrational environment that you're in. And this is the sanctification that occurs when you bless your food or you bless someone else or you bless a vibrational field. This is sanctification. You are actually elevating this frequency and bringing it closer to perfect truth. But just as there are many benevolent energies supporting this rise for you personally and for all of us energetically, there is also counterforce. Now in linear physics, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And if it were not for this, the manifest universe would burst 
into a blissful singularity right now. The manifest universe would not be contained if there was no counterforce to the ascension. And so confinement and limitation is a natural part of life that is occurring in a process reality with time and space. We agree that in the alpha and omega beyond definition, there is no evil, there is no counterforce, there is no problem, there is no wounding that hasn't been healed, but we are experiencing life in a process reality. So confinement and limitation is a natural part of that. Your journey up this imaginary scale is holy and you were not designed to just snap your fingers and burst into perfection. You were designed to participate with this journey. And so without confinement, without entropy, without the counterforce, there's no becoming, there's no discovery, there's no growth, there's no wonder without that constant veil of mystery pushing against us in our exploration and ascension in consciousness. So considering this, we can understand that as our collective experiences an exponentially rapid ascension, thanks to the injection of divine mind at 1000 that happened 2000 years ago with the birth of Jesus Christ, magnetizing the entire collective fabric upward, we can understand that as this is exponentially speeding up in our shared reality, as more and more people wake up into a new belonging, a new life up here with the genius mystics, as there is an exponential expansion, there is also the, the intensification of the experience of counterforce. So we can use a linear narrative and we can call it spiritual warfare if we like. And we can say that the spiritual warfare is intensifying, but we have to be careful with that language because that can create a mythology that sucks us into warriorhood. Let's for a moment slide our attention to Genesis. So God formed the Garden of Eden, which is a contained field of potentiality and self-actualizing abundance. And he placed the human consciousness in dominion and stewardship of creative possibility. We were made in the image. And in that field of creative possibility was the serpent. So recognize that the snake was already there. Humans didn't invent it. It's not an effect of our downfall. It's not in your life because you're not good enough. It's an idea in the mind of God, which means evil has its purpose and its place, which we've just uncovered, to keep a containment over the expansion so that we get to participate in the beautiful unfolding of becoming. And so we've said that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And as you ascend, you'll notice that counterforce pressing up against your natural expansion. And you'll notice that counterforce manifest in your areas of weakness. So what is that? Your spine, your marriage, your digestive system, your bank account, your sense of self, your third eye chakra, your confidence and expression, your relationship with technology. Notice what your weaknesses are and understand that when, when, when problems and troubles are occurring in these places, it's very likely that this is an opportunity to transcend a threshold because what you're feeling is the counterforce of expansion. So in Genesis 3.1, it says that the snake was more subtle than the wild animals that God had made. So we get it, evil is not a manifest beast. It is a subtle frequency. And notice that in Genesis 3.1, falsehood doesn't tell the human mind what to do. You'll see in Genesis 3.1, it doesn't say the snake told Eve to eat the apple. He doesn't do that. Actually, he says, he just questions. 
The snake says, really? Did God really say you couldn't eat that apple? He knows you won't die if you eat the apple. So counterforce doesn't necessarily look like direct opposition to the truth. There is no real opposition to truth. Instead, evil takes truth and twists it, introducing doubt and seducing your awareness by offering all sorts of egoic benefits, twisting your perspective to see the source of your fulfillment is out there, separating substance from spirit, separating the substance of reality from the spirit of reality. And in truth, these things are indivisible. The three nodes of creation, source, spirit, and substance are indivisible but it is evil's job to seduce our awareness to believe that substance is separate from spirit and source. Now for levels below 200, 200 is the point of neutrality, right? At 200, your mindset is neutral. It's sort of, meh, you win some, you lose some. I guess the sun might rise tomorrow, it usually does. Below uh, 200, um, it's very easy for the frequencies of evil to deceive because your awareness is in illusion already. And so your prehension is already in the frequency of deception. Yes, you are in the coding of evil. So you, you are in Antichrist. Under 200, you are in Antichrist. And so all evil needs to do is keep you there. Lies like you are worthless, or he's worthless, or you need to control him, or he needs to control you. These lies have a lot of impact in this field and are extremely effective. But for higher levels of consciousness, other mechanisms are necessary because the lie you are worthless has very little power over you because your knowing of I am worthy is much more powerful than that lie. So when others throw poison darts at you, or they come with an insult, or they question your authority, or they wonder if you really should be doing the thing you're doing, you might experience a sting because that's how you discern them as false. You're discerning the depressing effect on your biofield. So this is, this is your discernment. When people come to you and say, you can't do this or whatever it might be, it doesn't it doesn't um, capture your attention, but you allow yourself to discern the depressing frequency on your biofield. Yes. So when actions and energies come at you from lower levels of consciousness, it's on you to hold the strength of poise because you have the electromagnetic power to dissolve them. So let's say you're, you're, you're holding your poise up here. You come into true relation with someone down here who says, you're such an idiot. Now it is your responsibility to hold that poise because you have the electromagnetism to dissolve those frequencies. They don't. So if someone throws an insult at you, you have to let it roll off like water off a duck's back. Never ever abort mission to go chasing after someone who has nothing to do with your spiritual direction and devotion. That's on you. I'll say that again. Whenever someone or something, some counterforce comes at you from lower levels of consciousness, never ever abort your mission to go chasing after or correcting or, or, or restoring balance or fixing anything that has nothing to do with your spiritual direction and your devotion. Now at your log of consciousness, right? You're a genius mystic. So you're up here in the 500. So you're floating between 450 and 550. At your log of consciousness, evil is very unlikely to manifest in your actions. You're not likely to go out and commit a, an atrocious crime because you have the sovereignty of, of awareness and you have a very strong ele electromagnetic field. You might say a harsh word, 
you might get caught up with social media trolls, or you might drink more cups of coffee than your body wants. But for the most part, you have the sovereign discipline to choose right action. Usually, you are very, very good. So let's say the emotion of anger arises in you as a biological response to show you that one of your core values has been violated, but because you are sovereign, your sovereign reasoning is in charge of your decision-making and you don't throw a rock at your neighbor, right? So we agree that here in this field, we have a certain level of sovereignty that allows us to be reasonable over our emotions. We still allow these emotions, but evil cannot use them against us to cause harm. So instead, how does evil play with us? It shows up in other ways. For example, in these mid-range layers where, where we live around 500, populated by intelligent, powerful, purposeful, loving individuals and collectives, here, seduction and manipulation work very well. Evil has a field trip with us through seduction and manipulation. It says things like, if you eat the fruit, you'll be like a god. Or it says, if you don't eat the fruit, you'll never be able to reach the ones that need you the most. God will be so disappointed if you don't show up as your best badass boss bitch self. <laughs> Evil uses manipulation and seduction to trick our awareness out of the becoming and into the decline. And addiction can reach even beyond these logs of consciousness, even all the way up into the, into the awakened avatars of, of, of Buddha and Ram Das and Eckhart Tolle up in the 800s, because addiction can use, can use your own biochemistry to distract you from the truth. Go on, just one more cup of coffee, go on. So at your, um, uh, at your log of consciousness, here's another thing that evil does. It, it can seduce your attention inward. And that sounds like a paradox, doesn't it? Because fast food spirituality is always telling us to go inward instead of to meet God out there in the, in the field, in the becoming. And so evil can play with that and have us locked spinning in patterns of self-analysis. For example, if you're running a paradigm that everything out there is just a reflection of you, then anytime you experience a cha challenge in real life or you feel the manifestation of counterforce, it's really easy for evil to trick you into gazing inward at all your past traumas in agonizing self-psychoanalysis to dig about in all the muck to figure out why you're so broken and all the intergenerational wounds that you need to overcome before you can just get on with your mission. And evil says things like, if you eat the fruit, you'll be like a god, but you aren't manifesting the fruit. So that must be your lack consciousness and all the blockages from what Stacy said to you in third grade and that witch wound from eight lifetimes ago. And so instead of participating in the becoming, now you're locked spinning around. And it comes from a good place. It comes from your desire for truth. It comes from your longing for healing and reconciliation, but you're looking in the wrong place. Let's talk a little bit about um, the role that you play in managing the cosmic balance. Now, like I said at the very beginning, Even if you're highly sensitive, even if you're empathic by nature, it is not helpful to get too addicted to the narrative of spiritual warfare and to get too identified in the warriorship of that. You may be called to the front lines of energetic warfare that's manifesting in the lower astral realms, but it's unlikely. Why? Because there are other providential systems of creation working wonders in the lower astral realms. And us little fleshy humans don't need to lend our biofields and bodies as battlegrounds for energy transmutation. It's quite common for empaths to identify as doing something good when they absorb all the negative frequencies. And 
you can turn all agony into majesty. But if you're identifying that your body and biofield is a battleground, then this will be the experience that you have. And unfortunately, that self battle manifests in terrible ways in disease. When you experience grotesque visions and horrible narratives playing out in your clairvoyant mind, this is a sign that your radar is tuned into the lower astral and that your imagination is translating these energies into visual effects. Here's a quick line from the Gospel of Mary. This is chapter five, verses five to 11. She says, I saw the Lord in a vision and I said to him, Lord, I saw you today in a vision. And he answered and said to me, blessed are you that you did not waver at the sight of me for where the mind is, there is the treasure. I said to him, Lord, how does he who sees the vision see it? Is it through the soul or through the spirit? And the savior answered and said, he does not see through the soul nor through the spirit, but the mind which is between the two, that is what sees the vision. So this is a piece of scripture that helps us understand that the mind translates energetic frequency into linear understanding, into, into clairvoyant vision and linear narrative. So if you find yourself occupied in an experience of warfare and you're actually having the visualizations and the physical experiences of, um, of the horrendous experiences that can go on in the lower astrals, then this is a sign that it is your mind that is dialed into that dimension. It is very unlikely that the providential sovereign God who loves you so dearly is asking you to keep your mind dialed into the lower astral realm and be experiencing the gruesome imagination that occurs there. The same if you're being tossed about by planetary energies or solar flares, the chances are you're participating in a playing field that has nothing to do with who you are and how you serve. The fact that these warfare dynamics are occurring is okay. God is aware of that and has it covered. But you may be called to the front lines of healing the effects of evil. We do have energy workers in the Oasis who are involved with the deliverance for victims of satanic ritual or sex trade, chronic trauma states, spiritual bullying. And if this is where your calling is, all the more important that you don't align with the narrative of how bad and evil the world is, but that you hold the sovereign position of unconditional love and truly know the one before you as the beloved Christ. So the liberation then is to observe counterforce as an effect of expansion and deal with it from that mindset, not agree with it as an identity experience and then internalize those energies. When you have the sovereignty to observe counterforce as an effect of expansion, you're free to simply perform the energy hygiene to clear these frequencies, establish the correct field of spiritual protection and identify the thresholds. In the Oasis, we will train you in all of these things. They're very, very simple techniques. Whatever you do, don't get complex in your spiritual practice. So the thresholds um, will, will blah, blah, blah. the thresholds that you're identifying are, uh, are made known to you almost like how the shoe rubs. So where the counterforce is showing up or pushing up against you, that's where the shoe is rubbing. That's a clue about what's next for you to move through. So is it showing up in yourself? Is it showing up in your emotional awareness? Is it showing up in your technology, in your bank account? Complete what needs to be completed in those areas and enjoy the ascension. Again, come into the oasis for the belonging, the support and the accountability to follow through with these things. Let's go a little further into distinction. We're gonna borrow some vernacular from the noble Catholic cosmology. And we're going to identify or categorize evil in three ways. At the lower level, we're gonna call it the sin of the flesh. And this is our personal sin. 
This is our shadow world of thoughts and feelings and actions on an individual level that counter the organic expression of God or that deny or diminish the experience of love for ourselves or others. And when you witness this sin moving through you or even through others, your job is to not personalize and characterize uh, the manifest form as evil, but instead um, to, to understand that they, like you, are vulnerable to this dynamic and that lets you be immediately merciful. So we're not consigning evil to any substantive particularized form. The next level then is the sin of the world. And these are the structures and systems of economy, politics, culture and religion that serve to glorify the structure. These are the corporate systemic illusions and manipulation that informs our choices when we're not aware, imposing culturally agreed upon limitations and exclusions, little tracks of evil that we unconsciously whiz along on. What is beauty? What is abundance? What is acceptable? What is success? All of these little uh, definitions and labels that we unconsciously make agreement with and allow it to guide our choices. But this is the realm where light workers and activists have great influence. This is where we get to experience large scale change and progress in the name of the kingdom. Your sovereign actions are constantly contributing to improvement as we collectively ascend out of those lower systems of creation. And then at the highest level, at the highest level of our categories of evil, we will, we will use the term that the Catholics have called Satan. And we will say that this is the fundamental coding of illusion and deceit, the idea in the mind of God, the innate frequency that dominates the very air we breathe as the spiritual pioneer Paul writes in Ephesians. And this is a part of the potential fabric of creation, just like grace, just like abundance. The snake was there in the garden already and does not need to be overcome by you. In Christ, there is no agreement with evil and therefore there is no manifest experience of it. This is how subtle the frequency of falsehood is. It can't be sourced out there. It can't be typecast as a particular character or ideology or industry or political party. Its entire agenda is to win your attention out there and nanosecond by nanosecond, keep your consciousness from entering the kingdom of heaven. So you can't really win over evil, no matter where your log of consciousness is because you'll always be receptive to it simply because it's there like the cicadas humming in the undertone in the forest. You can tune into it at any time to internalize that hum and let it manifest through you. And there is always the chance that you'll forget, even for a moment, that there's a third force at play. And that's grace. Grace trumps all the laws of physics and metaphysics. Grace is embedded in reality, so you always have access to it. This is the frequency that transmutes counterforce as easily as, as mist at dawn, just like that. And it's infinitely abundant in the place of sovereign poise. And when you have the mastery of recognizing, then you can stand face to face with the particularization of Satan and know that you are Christ. Repeat after me again. I know who I am. I know how I serve. I am sovereign. Good. And so while you can't really ever beat the counterforce that is evil, you can learn the mastery of aligning with the fields that has forever overcome and thus releasing entropic energy frequencies and returning to sovereign points. Now you have the sovereignty to choose how you dance with the resistance that will never just go away and you'll be able to meet your life with much less vulnerability to trigger. I wanna show you something really special.
if this is a stained glass window of your life, and the spirit of creation is always moving through you from an infinite source of never ending spiritual provision. And this constant creativity is moving through your framework of consciousness, picking up all the different paradigms and agreements that you've made that are less than truth, manifesting, projecting through your energy field and manifesting in your life, There we go. This is God. This is life. Then as you ascend in consciousness, the spirit of creation intensifies. And any paradigms that you have that are less than truth are made manifest in your life. And you are in true relation with these. But... Let's say that you place your framework of consciousness underneath another framework of consciousness that is perfect in its knowing, that has made no agreement with warfare. Let's say here I am a warrior, that's an identity. I'm a light worker. I have to beat evil. I have to heal the world. All of these identities are active in your, in your relationship with yourself. When you place your frame of, of consciousness underneath one that is 100% knowing itself as I am that I am. then that infinite frequency of spiritual creation, the spirit of God that never ceases creating, moves through this framework of consciousness first and is projected over you as an energy field of 100% mercy. Mercy is love applied to what is already. So now you're projecting inside that field and your entire life is bathed in the frequency of mercy. Here's a lovely bit from Psalms 91.4. It goes, he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Isn't that lovely? So we're not talking here, we're not talking about salvation as a one-time event that secures you a ticket to a linear eternity in the afterlife that's not what we're talking about and we're not talking about I don't need saving because I'm so ascended and enlightened already but instead a humble recognition that we're allowed to rest in a personal energy field of profound loving enoughness and never-ending mercy and let me also say that just because you know Jesus personally doesn't mean you're using him to his capacity. I know people who say, oh, I love Jesus. I talk with him every day. Great. I'm so happy about your friendship. But why are you still carrying all your burdens and fighting all the battles and bemoaning all your woundings and imperfections? Receive the one who is opening to you so deeply and surrender those battles to the one who has already won. Let's look at some of the metaphysical effects of this alignment. Number one, this is a great environment for you to be practicing your mastery and ascension work, right? If you're participating in your ascension and you're constantly experiencing counterforce, wouldn't you rather be doing that inside a vibrational environment characterized by grace? You can really simplify your, your spirituality. And the other thing is the framework of consciousness that's directing your movements and your decisions is already perfectly knowing. So your success in life rapidly increases. This is he is Lord, right? He is Lord. So if you're confused about where to go or how to serve or whether you should go up or down or left or right, 
delegate that decision-making process to the sovereign one. Secondly, when you stray out of this field because you find yourself under the influence of, of, of seduction, right, and you find yourself out here in alternative made up reality, fighting some imaginary battle, he comes and brings you back. When you're wandering in the thickets of overwhelm and pain, he brings you home again. Why? Because that's a part of the covenant of this alignment. He is savior. So he is Lord and he is savior. Isn't that an incredible vibrational environment to be practicing your ascension in, to be doing your light work in, to be contributing in the spiritual warfare of the constant dynamic between ascension and entropy? Wouldn't you rather be doing this work held underneath his feathers, held in his embrace? Imagine if one of the main stories in your diamond consciousness is Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Creation will manifest that way in a phenomenological process reality, in an infinite cosmic sea of quantum possibility. He will save you when you're drowning. Think of that. Subtle attunements to your perspective so you can see clearly where it was hazy before. Subtle adjustments to your body chemistry so you feel better and brighter. Subtle new thoughts and knowings. The light dialed slightly up. Despair turns to hope and your own actions shift. You magnetize higher energy fields and denser energies dissolve and dissipate, smudge or no smudge. Now living inside this body, you are utterly one with the essence of love. You are in a God, not just infinitely powerful, but also intimately real and in relation with you, loving you just like this. I am knowing that I am love. That's your sovereign statement. And then as it says in Ephesians 3, 17 to 18, then Christ will make a home in your heart as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. Thank you so much for joining today. It was a lot of information to receive, but I hope that you were able to rest in the receiving and, and just learn some distinctions or sharpen your distinctions of what counterforce is and how it works. Knowing these frequencies as they arise in your life will help you discern whether the urge you're feeling is the desire of God or the lure of entropic counterforce. Recognizing this will give you a broader and deeper awareness of truth and it will improve your worldly mission as you effectively sift and sort through which identities, ideals, energy fields and situations deserve your engagement, which battles are yours to fight and which are not. So finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. That's Philippians 4.8. Just a reminder that the Oasis is our membership-based study group where we will practice the simple energy techniques of clearing frequencies of entropy, creating spiritual protection for ourselves and working together in devotion for all things holy and good. So join the Oasis and be with us. Now I'm gonna sh shut down the live stream and we'll take some questions and communion here in the Oasis. Thank you for joining. <laughs>